Hello, I'm Hannah Chia, and this is my final project for Asian American 171. I will be discussing the topic of different film representations of the Khmer Rouge regime, specifically through the films of The Killing Fields and The Missing Picture. But first, before I get deeper into it, I want to give some context behind this topic. So this topic is particularly meaningful to me as my parents and relatives are refugees from Cambodia and live through the Khmer Rouge regime. So I will be going deeper into the historical background of the Khmer Rouge regime and the Cambodian genocide, but in short, it was an incredibly traumatic experience for my family, especially since they lived through it as a young age. And also, since I was born and grew up in America, my mother would often try to show me these videos, these films about the Cambodian genocide to try to teach and, you know, share with me her experiences. And some of these films were The Killing Fields and The Missing Picture. And the funny thing was that my mom would always tell me, hey, these films may seem scary to you, but they aren't even real. I lived through the real thing and it's way worse. And that ties in very closely to my next slide here. And although there is no singular Cambodian refugee experience, just like how there is no singular Asian or Asian American experience, this really encouraged me to compare and contrast both of these films. So here I have the overview of what I will be talking about today. So after I go over the historical context of the Khmer Rouge and give an overview of the two films, I'll go deeper and dive into the questions of the role in memory and storytelling, realistic replication versus non-realistic reinterpretation of memory, and lastly, who is allowed to hold and tell these stories and history. So here on this slide tells a brief history of the Khmer Rouge regime. Khmer Rouge means Red Khmer in French, and this was the communist political party that ruled Cambodia from 1975 to 1979 after the eight-year-long civil war. And their whole agenda was to create a sort of social engineering project to vert Cambodia back into the year zero classless agrarian society. And this included the forced removal of everyone in the cities into working on labor camps in the countryside. As named as one of the worst genocides in the 20th century, one and a half to three million people were killed in this mass genocide, which was about a quarter of Cambodia's population. And specifically, the people targeted were religious and ethnic minorities and those who were educated, lawyers, researchers, doctors, even people who wore glasses. And why this is important, especially in relation to America, is because America was extremely involved in the war in Vietnam and Cambodia, which is why all of these stories are so prevalent in the society and why there are so many refugees in America. So now that I've given you this brief overview of the Cambodian history, we could go deeper and introduce The Killing Fields. So here's The Killing Fields. It was aired in 1984. It was directed by Roland Joffe and produced by David Putnam. And this story was completely based off of a book called The Death and Life of Dith Pran by Sidney Schongberg. And this story basically follows New York Times reporter Sidney Schongberg as he is stationed in Cambodia with his Cambodian interpreter Guy Dith Pran. And when the Khmer Rouge took control, Schongberg and his other Western journalist friends were able to leave. But were unable to bring Pran along with them, which that story basically follows Pran and the atrocities that happened to him. And this film was one of the first that really exposed Cambodia's history to the greater audience, and which is why it won a numerous amount of awards, the most notable probably being the seven Oscar nominations and the three Oscar wins. Now moving on to a more recent film called The Missing Picture that was aired in 2013. This film was directed and written by Rithu Pan. It used a mixture of clay figures and live clips to kind of tell his and his family's story as they suffered through the Khmer Rouge regime. And this was also a film that won multiple awards. So as we see here, both of these films take two very different perspectives on the Khmer Rouge regime. And this is definitely due to that role of memory in the storytelling process. So as we see here with The Killing Fields, the film was directed and produced by two white men, based on a book that was also written by a white man on a Cambodian man's life. So we see here, when we're talking about the role of memory in storytelling, the actual story of The Killing Fields was incredibly far removed from the first person memory of the Khmer Rouge. But this role of memory actually comes back into the killing fields w with actor Hang S. Noor, who played the Cambodian interpreter Dith Pran in the film. Hang S. Noor actually is a Khmer Rouge survivor and actually lived through the entire experience and really relied on that past trauma as he played Dith Pran. Although with no prior acting experience, Hang S. Noor actually won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor through his work of playing Dith Pran in this film. And this was because of his reliance on his memory, on his trauma, really utilizing that into his art of playing this character. And moving on to the role of memory in The Missing Picture. This entire film was used as a way for Pan to kind of heal and kind of process his memory. And an interesting quote that I found in one of his memoirs was, Memory must remain a reference point. What I'm looking for is comprehension. I want to understand the nature of the crime, not to establish a cult of memory. So this is really an interesting quote that really takes us into how he views memory. And this goes on to our next slide here, actually that memory is naturally fragile and flawed. 
And memories especially that way, especially if you've been through a traumatic experience such as the Khmer Rouge. So this brings up the question of if stories based on memory have to be quote unquote accurate, have to be quote unquote real, especially when memory is not necessarily the most reliable source of this knowledge, right? And it really brings up into consideration of what exactly does accuracy mean in a film? What does quote unquote real mean in a film? Moving on to realistic replication versus non-realistic reinterpretation. Here we have The Killing Fields is a great example of realistic replication. This film was based on a true story and the entire film really focused on replicating the environment of the Khmer Rouge and it really captures the audience and makes them feel so invested into this world that they create. And here we have a quote from the director Roland Joffe himself. We shot these scenes in the countryside outside Bangkok. Lots of realistic looking corpses had been laid out. It was all very disturbing. You'd get a crawling feeling up your back during shooting. And it was a real panic when a farmer's wife went out early in the morning and got a total shock when she saw them. Poor woman. So I understand that this quote is meant to be more lighthearted, but I definitely will talk more on the fact of the idea of at what cost are we willing to go for this realistic replication, right? Is it to the point of reintroducing this trauma to the community, to the people who have experienced it? We'll move on to the missing picture as it represents non-realistic reinterpretation. So here we have the use of clay figures, which could be seen as the material embodiment of the making and unmaking of both nature and the individual of the Khmer Rouge. So as we spoke about with the Khmer Rouge wanting to really kind of dehumanize and kind of lessen the people to be simply just farmers wearing all black as we've seen in these films. These clay figures were also used simply because Pan himself believed that there was no way you could ever replicate the horrors, the atrocities of what happened during that time period. So the clay figures are sort of a way to also distance himself from that traumatic experience while still somewhat replicating it. It's also important to mention that the narration in this film is neither the filmmaker's own voice or his native language. So we see here even in the original clips of Cambodians talking. It has actually been dubbed over by French and this is supposed to represent kind of like the effect of French colonialism on Cambodia and its people. This usage of French also actually helped create distance between this traumatic experience and the audience because you aren't necessarily experiencing or hearing the exact same scenarios as they would be in the native language of Cambodian. So after clarifying what those two different film representations of the Khmer Rouge regime was, this really brings into question of who is allowed to hold and tell these stories in history, right? So as we see with the missing picture, it's Pan's own story as a Cambodian who lived through that experience. He not only created this film to help himself heal, but also kind of help the community heal, really reclaiming that story, especially since Cambodian history has been so dominated by French culture and Western culture. But on the other hand, we have The Killing Fields, which we did mention before as mainly a story taken and interpreted by white men. And it really brings up into question of who is the story really for? And is this film just exploiting the Cambodian refugee community's trauma for entertainment? Also, is this film reinflicting trauma on our community? And although I've posed all of these questions, I understand that there are no absolute concrete answers, especially as the Southeast Asian community continues to heal from this traumatic experience that happened over 40 years ago. We've seen today that storytelling through film can be used as a way of healing for our community, especially seen through Pond's artistic interpretation of the missing picture. I also want to acknowledge that the mainstream representation of the killing films help the wider global audience understand more of Cambodia traumatic history, but it still raises the question of the potential exploitation of that history and also reinflicting harm onto our community. And that is all, all my thoughts of the different film representations of the Khmer Rouge regime. Thank you so much for listening and I'll leave this off with a picture of my work cited. Thank you.